I arose from my bed to a world unknown, with unfamiliar earth under my feet, and a wind whispering an unknown language through my hair. Part 2 of Stranded in Fantasy Journal Entry 110 Six Bullets I was in my first large-scale battle today. We made it to Wolfdale, the farming community. About eight farms, a tavern, housing, and so on. The civvies evacuated when the Wolf Lake army spotted us and we moved in. The battle. It started with some magic being thrown around and then a charge. We outnumbered them, but even so, the new cavalry destroyed their left flank. Mike stayed in the back with the other casters as did Marcus. I was placed in the third wave with Jason. We were the wave that came in and cleaned up anything left. I helped flush out hiding survivors. We lost about 40 people on our side while we broke this defensive force. We're going to hold it for two days while the food is gathered up and transported to the main camp. Bodies have been looted, prisoners taken, and interrogated. I've been in so many mines today, I'm having trouble differentiating my thoughts from stray ones that crossed over. I'm camped up in the tavern with a load of others. Marcus is keeping our spirits high with his music. I don't think I'm going to be doing much else tonight. I ache all over, my head is jumbled. Journal Entry 111 While we are getting ready to move out, a lone rider shows up with a white flag and hands our war leader some scroll. A formal demand of surrender. Terms are surrender and they'll only enslave the tribes. Failure to do so it is death for all by command of king under the might of whatever god. The messenger survived, but he got his answer carved into a corpse he's chained to. Dramatic, but effective. The trip back to the main camp should be about two days hard march, and we're ready for it. Said goodbye to Wolfdale the farming community, soon it'll be in flames. Once we get to camp, and with the resources we got here, we'll hold out for the winter and start attacking come spring assuming Wolf Lake doesn't send an attack force. Well, time to move. Journal Entry 112. Only a day out and we come face to face with one of Wolf Lake's armies. They're on the way to sack our encampment while we were away, but we caught up to them. We have to go through them to get back, and they are ready. We're about a mile apart, preparing for the upcoming battle. I'm in the third wave again. The numbers appear even. My rough estimate is about 8,000 each. The Wolf Lake army is mostly wearing heavy chain armor and brigandines, lots of grayish blue, and are using big tower shields, lots of long spears. I think that they're moving into multiple phalanx formations. Fuck. I wish we had more magic users on our side. The only place that had any great number of them was Aeon. Each side only appears to have a handful. A handful of casters and one telepath. Marcus has been playing his best encouraged song to the tune of We Will Rock You. The orcs have gotten into it. It is fucking inspiring. Mike is as ready as he'll ever be, and Jason is getting hyped. I hope someone's watching over us because this is going to be insane. Journal Entry 113 It's been a few days. Where to begin? It began to snow during the battle. It was almost cinematic. I used up both magazines of my gun. 16 bullets. After that, it was the sword. It's not easy adjusting mid-swing to try and hit holes in their armor. Sometimes I would try and get a few seconds by making them see someone else, or just mentally knock them silly. I felt a lot of people die that day, and we lost. The cavalry smashed upon the phalanx's flank like the ocean and shattered their defenses. It looked good, initially. Then they each were systematically separated and slaughtered, one at a time. They went in way too early. By the time the front line got there, the phalanx reformed. We must have killed half of their force, but we lost almost everyone. I met up with the others. Marcus had taken several arrows, but was good enough to move still. Mike was out of magic, but avoided injury. Jason's blind in one eye. A spear got lucky. He was alive, but bleeding everywhere. I was still unharmed, but exhausted by then. We decided to make a run for one of the other war camps to warn them to get medical treatment magic or otherwise. We were caught by patrol, and I was run down by a horse, trampled, and speared. There was fighting, but then everything faded out. I only remember blackness after that. Journal Entry 114 I woke up naked and tied to a rack. The survivors dragged me back. I guess I was still alive. I was healed, and to be tortured, repeatedly. Not for information, just to make a point. For fighting for the enemy. Any information was just icing. There was only two of them. 
the cleric and some archivist. The archivist was taking notes on what looked like a huge book. The cleric never got a chance to turn the wheel. I made the archivist think he was me. He murdered the cleric and then set me free. Then I stole anything of use from his mind, then erased everything. A mental format. I stole some clothes and managed to find my things nearby, spread across a table minus my sword. The Kindle was turned on. I wonder what they thought of it. I used one of the cleric's spare robes and managed to get out of the dungeon by making the guards think I was him. I left the hood up, so he only had to manipulate the one looking at my face. I escaped and now I'm in town. Welcome to Wolf Lake. Journal Entry 115 So I have no money. Mike had the money. I'm hiding out in one of the seedier inns. I manipulated the innkeeper into thinking that I paid him in advance for a few weeks, and I was an old friend and certainly not the stranger the guards were looking for. I got a nice hot meal and a warm bed for my efforts. From what I got out of the archivist, the others were not captured and may still be out there. Meanwhile, I'm here. Wolf Lake is a much larger city than I expected. It's certainly no village. It's as large as Aeon, at least. All plastered in wood structures and stone walls. It's divided up into districts by use. The smithing district is in full production for the war. The market is bustling, but a sense of apprehension is thick in the air. Residential is quiet and constantly patrolled. Lots of anti-orc propaganda. The town crier is constantly going off about them murdering babies for food and raping everything with legs. I did the old taser in the alley trick to get some money. Not much, but enough for some new clothes. Trousers and tunics. Oh baby, at least they're clean. Journal Entry 116 I recognized someone today. I was on the market, grifting someone, when out of the corner of my eye, I see Avery, dressed in the robes of the Sun Church. What the hell was she doing here? I stayed my distance and followed her for a while. She went into the local Sun Church. I asked around, and then asked some of the apprentice clerics hanging around outside about her. She arrived in town two months ago to help in the war with healing. A call went out for help in the Orc War, and she left Rosenbridge to volunteer. They don't know anything about Alex, though. Apparently, Avery's become a very devout believer in the ways of the Sun Worshippers. She's still considered an apprentice, but is moving up in the ranks. I'm going to try and make contact with her tomorrow. Journal Entry 117 So, I met up with Avery today. I just walked up to her while she was out doing her rounds, and surprise, it's me. I surprised the shit out of her. She was ecstatic to see me. So many questions. We found a nice outside cafe and had a long talk. I told her of our adventures to Winterfield, to Aeon and back. I left out some things, of course. She doesn't need to know about our part in King Slaying, Grand Theft Everything, and Child Abandonment. She said a prayer for Amanda and Dan. After so long, she assumed that we had all died. She joined the church after a vision, and because she believed she had nothing left, Alex recovered fully, and after talking with some spell slingers, he found he was more suited for sorcery than wizardry. I could be wrong, but doesn't that require a special genetic background to use? He got some instruction and can throw around spells now. Apparently has trouble keeping control of it and accidentally caused some property damage. He headed off to Alien a little before she left for Wild Lake to learn to control himself better. If my math is right, he was arriving as we were leaving, assuming something didn't slow down his trip. According to Avery, Alex has been hoping to find us there, but never gave up hope. As for the others, they were shipped to Wild Lake slave pens. Something will have to be done. Anyways, I let Avery recharge her laptop and iPod off my charge stone. She was giddy. Unfortunately, she didn't have any new movies. Journal Entry 118 Met up with Avery again for lunch. She put two and two together over the course of the night and realized that yes, I'm the baby murdering orc lover traitor spy that escaped from the dungeon a few days ago. She did confront me about it. I wasn't going to lie to her. So then a paladin showed up and sat down at our table. I felt very uneasy around him. Avery said she was not going to turn me into the king, but I was going to be arrested under the church and held in protective custody until the war is over or they figure out what to do with me. So I went. I'm not gonna fight her. There aren't enough of us left for us to be turning on each other. They let me keep my things. I don't think Avery even knows I have a pistol with me. 
She did take my journal, though, and read through it. I just got it back. She can't decide if she should be furious with me or not after all I've done and all I've suffered through. I think she was more incredulous that I've been documenting it in detail. It's a good thing she doesn't know about the things I didn't document. She is adamant, however, that I need to pay for my sins. Maybe I do. Maybe I'm not done sinning. Anyways, we watched strange days, and then she left. My cell is a plain stone room with a plain bed, a tiny window, and some church iconography. It's not exactly tiny, and I'm not imprisoned here. I can walk around, just not leave the wing. Journal Entry 119 Well, I was in that place a grand total of 21 hours, according to my MP3 player. The longer I was there, the more claustrophobic I felt. Avery came to see me in the morning, and we talked about what I was doing with the orcs. Told her my side of things, and I may have convinced her that this war isn't about good and evil, it's a land grab. Come lunchtime, she was off doing church duty, and I decided enough was enough, and walked out. Poked a few mines to get my way, but I didn't hurt anyone, for Avery's sake. I left her a note apologizing. I'm back at the inn, not feeling so claustrophobic now. I need to figure out what to do. I'm stuffed in Wolf Lake with the guards and now the Sun Church looking for me. I bet the rest of my team think I'm dead in the battlefield. Thinking back, getting mind raped by Skinhead McTattoo was the best thing to happen to me on this world. She opened some doors for me. Without that, I'd be truly fucked. At least I have some options. I'm going to poke around town tomorrow and see if I can find anything useful. Journal Entry 120 Hey, the city has an airship port. I have an idea. I just have to wait for the airship to arrive. Manage to grift some money and browse the market. News from the war. The surviving orc horde managed to sack a few supply caravans on a farm. Everyone murdered, dead strung up, babies eaten, etc, etc. Between the lines, I'm glad they're still fighting. They haven't given up yet. Picked up some rumors. Apparently, the royal castle's been enhanced by a thieves guild turned traitor. And even they haven't been able to break in since. There goes that idea. The city gates are locked up tight, only allowing trade caravans in. And anyone not expected gets arrested. There's also a curfew. So yeah, this place is under martial law. Whispers in the street is that there are some freedom fighters skulking about. I took a look into that, and anyone that knows anything is a toady for one of the noble families, the Rhinegrafts. I can't tell if it's an elaborate trap, or a manipulative attempt at a backdoor coup. I'm going to take a risk and dig deeper. Journal Entry 121 I talked my way into a meeting with these freedom fighters down at the slums. Not very organized. Their plans were odd, probably orders from on the high with no context. They have a list of people that need to be dealt with, and I don't mean killed. Publicly humiliated, disgraced, and so on. Replaced in a way that won't draw undue attention. Their methods leave something to be desired. Dirty rumors and name calling more or less. I have some ideas on how to deal with this. But is this actually going to help me in any way? Well, it keeps me occupied and I can experiment so I gave it a shot. Target 1. There's a tavern keeper in the market district who runs the wolf's head and needs to be ruined. I paid a visit during his slow hours. Case the joint. He's a retired adventurer. Hardcore supporter for the king and his policies. Gives discounts to off-duty military. They call him Screaming Howl of Wolf Lake. Some name based around one of his adventures in the earlier pacification war years ago. You know what else screams? Babies. I put in the niggling fear that's an insult. That maybe everyone's been making fun of him behind his back this whole time and having a grand time about it. Taking advantage of his ignorance for cheap booze. I'll let that bake for a while and see how it turns out. Journal Entry 122 So while number one is baking, I'm seeing about target number two. A madam of a brothel. High class establishment. All the girls are magically purged after every use. Silks everywhere. She's been using her girls to gather info on dissidents. I paid a visit. Went for a ride around the block. I'm going to try greed with this one. Maybe she's not getting paid enough for information. Maybe there are people who will pay more. Maybe she deserves some political favors for all of the good she does for the nobles she supports. Nobles that she's saved with her information. She looked pretty lost in thought on my way out. We'll see how that works out. In other news, it's time to move out of the inn. Avery left a note on my bed, 
ordering me to return for my own good. No surprise paladins or anything this time. I've since moved into an abandoned tower residence on the seedy side of town. Not a lot of room, but as a clean bed I can use in privacy. Journal Entry 123 I guess I won't get a chance to find out how my experiments are doing. An airship is in town. A small cargo hauler from Hebrew. One of the main trade hub cities along with Rosenbridge and Wild Lake. Airships always draw a crowd, so I went over to poke around a bit. The last two airships I've been on used a magic dongle. It was required for any of the navigation stuff to work. Flying one looked easy enough. Who would have the key? The captain, of course. Found him picking up chicks at a tavern after he was done unloading. He didn't have the key. It's locked in a safe on board the boat. I did get the combination, though. So I'm going to traipse over there, think my way on board, take the key, and fly away. Grand Theft Airship. Fuck yeah. Journal Entry 124 Clearly, I was drunk on success. So I get to the airship pad and smite. Paladins, clerics, Avery. She guessed I'd try and escape. She read my journal again. I'm in a lot of trouble. I'm back in the same room. But now I have this thing on my head. Some kind of leather band that I can't take off. If I move a few feet away from the church, pain. Avery says it's only pain because I've become evil. It's the church's god influence burning away at the evil. She says that once it stops burning me, I'll be good and I can leave. I feel like a child that's been grounded. She confiscated my gun and my charge stone, so I need to see her now to keep my stuff running. To make matters worse, they're all, all of them, wearing glowing temporary tattoos that block me off. Fuck. Journal Entry 125 So my imprisonment in the church. Well, Avery has been spending her breakfast and dinner with me. We sit, discuss, and debate. She has admitted that if she had gone with us to Alien, she'd be in a similar state. If she'd take off that damn tattoo, I could show her right in her mind. But no, I can't be trusted yet. She's very naive about what's going on out there. Being locked up in a church and surrounded by like-minded people all day skews perspective. Divine groupthink. So yeah, I'm bitter. So a little after breakfast, a paladin walks over and backhands me across the room. I think he broke my nose. Then he heals me and tells me to keep my hands off Avery. Calls me scum. The works. Leaves me there, crumpled on the floor. I think he's jealous. I mean, I'm not going to mess with her, even if she's the reason I'm here. She's like a little sister to me. Either way, I need to get out of this fucking place. This is an intolerable situation. Journal Entry 126 Do you know what there is to do around a church all day if not a member? Sit around and do nothing, that's what. Self-reflection, maybe, but not for me. I've made it a personal quest to find ways of fucking with the paladins. All the church members meet up in the afternoon for their prayer service. That's when I work. Moving things around, hiding things, rearranging. Sure, it's stupid little pranks, but what else am I going to do? I did get some news from my two experiments. The tavern owner's gone over the deep end and has barred military and even guards from using his place. He may even be behind a minor poisoning of some guard captains. The madam wasn't as successful. Word is, her backers decided to give in to her demands. How did I find this out? The Freedom Fighters found me when one of their members were in for magical STD treatments. I may have gotten the attention of the Rhinegrafts from my work. Journal Entry 127 News from the war. It sounds like the Orc Cavalry is finally getting its shit together. The town crier is starting to throw around the horse-mounted demon card loosely now. On the other hand, it sounds like they lost another major battle. The orcs are winning the skirmishes, but not the large-scale battles. Heavy losses on both sides. Most of the church personnel has been called away for healing, and the occasional resurrection for any dead war hero nobles. This would have been a grand opportunity, and Avery, apparently, came to the same conclusion. So I've been leashed. I have a chain around my leg that's connected to my bedpost. I have about 20 feet of slack, just enough to make it to the bathroom. Chained up like an animal. This is going too far, and this will not stand. Journal Entry 128 I have escaped from the church. The idiot freedom fighters decided to break me out while the healers were away dealing with war casualties. I did manage to get the things Avery took from me. Found my pistol under her pillow. 
What the hell is that all about? So they unchain me, get that stupid pain crown off me, and we make our grand escape. Right to one of Rhinegraf's holdings, a decorative cottage near the market. A guest house. One of them was there, all dressed in more layers of clothing than that was necessary, even with the cold weather. They want me to work for them under their house spy master. They didn't offer the position, they told me. People with my skills are few and far between apparently, and they think they can get a political advantage with me under their spy master. Oh, an escape is nigh impossible. The spy master can just up and disappear whenever he feels like it, and for some reason, I can't touch his mind. He's no telepath, he's just impenetrable. He puts some kind of magic link on me so he knows where I am at all times. So I'm still a prisoner, the chains are just invisible this time. I'm a commodity rather than an animal. Wonderful. Journal Entry 129. So the Rhinegraphs. They run half the trade caravans in this kingdom. Started as an imports exports merchant family that got lucky back during the last pacification war and earned themselves a noble title from secret of war profiteering that fucked the other side's logistics. They've tasted power and now they want more. They are one of the richest noble houses in the kingdom but have the least amount of political power since they're relatively new to the scene. They have the money, but not the connections that the other nobles have. Their secret backroom handshake deals have been few and far between. My new boss, the spy master, was imported from afar and is obscenely loyal for some reason. He's one of the elf ethnicities. I bet he was programmed. People don't get this fanatic for nobles on their own. At least I hope not. Might explain why I can't touch his mind. Journal Entry 130. So the spy master took me into the field today, now that I got the house history down. This mainly consisted of putting around the market while he checked his contacts, and me making sure that they weren't holding anything back, and the both of us beating the shit out of someone when they were. Half his network is compromised in some way. He's stealthy as hell, but not too good at running a spy network. Ran into Avery. I'm under noble protection now, so the church can't legally touch me, as long as I'm not performing profane undead rituals, within the city walls anyway. She's upset, of course, but I think I got the point across that I'm still in danger. I need to get out of this fucking place, and I hope the others are still alive. And that is where we will end for today. If you like the story, and others like them, be sure to like and subscribe to Neckbeardia, and click the bell icon so you know when the videos are released through the week. This has been Garbro, and I will see you next time. All those moments will be lost in time. Like.